I feel like this plaque is small. I feel like we need an upgrade to a big gold big, one. Big, big. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction to you and Sub Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. Juicy content. So juicy. I'm going to case. Go on. I'm YouTube channels. It's right down there for you. Uh, today, we are doing a movie review. Yep. Yeah, so another Malayalam. Did I say it correct? That was actually correct. Ha! Malayalam. Ha! <laughs> like, here I, yeah, that was correct. I've been saying it. <laughs> for one video, Malayalam. Malayalam. A uh, film, uh, our second for- JLP. JLP, which I guess is the, because every single time I see his middle name, I want to say Jose. I know. It's just how, like, anytime you see that spelling- Is it here JLP or, here, or LJP? Lilo or Jose? It, yeah. Lilo, Josie, yeah. or Jos. Lilo, right? LJP. Yeah. yeah. Anytime yeah. you see J-O-S-E, it's Jose, Jose in here. our culture. But obviously different and Lijo yeah it would be Lijo Jose but it's not it's Lee Joe Joe's Josie yeah no. anyway LJP uh, but also I wanted to let you guys know I've made a playlist for every language of uh, film that we've done so uh, there's a playlist for Hindi language movie reviews Mali Mali Maliali Mal <laughs> Malayalam? That's it. Okay. <laughs> Malayalam, there's a place for that. Uh, Assamese, uh, Telugu, whatever. There's, there's Canada. Uh, everything except the Punjabi, because we haven't gotten there yet. We yeah. will. Um, and I guess there's a few other smaller ones, too. But just letting you know, if you want to see a full playlist of the, those languages, they're there for you on the channel. And anybody who, in recent date, has been really concerned that the channel doesn't cover enough Hindi stuff. Just look at the playlist, would you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, today we are uh, reviewing a movie. E-E-M-A... Um, y... E-E-M-A... Y-A? E-E-M-A-Y-A-U. Y-A-U, yeah. Which I believe transfer means rest in peace or Mary uh, Joseph. Jesus Jesus Joseph and Mary okay yeah Mary yeah, yeah. IMDB translates to RIP I've seen it translated to the other one as well um, yeah, and, and I guess it's because those culturally what I understand is it's the Jesus Mary and Joseph thing is actually like a prayer that is said into the ear of somebody who's died culturally mm. I read that somewhere so gotcha. I think if somebody saw those actual Malayalam words that represent Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, they're going to immediately associate that with death. Gotcha. Whereas we wouldn't mm -mm. at all. No. R.I.P. Yeah. Instantly. 100%. Yeah. Uh, but yes, this will be 100% spoiler review. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Come back. Uh, I believe it's only two hours, so uh, give it a watch. Uh, and so, Rick, your initial thoughts. Go. I don't have a paragraph because I have paragraphs that I didn't <laughs> synopsize. But I basically can say... Mm -hmm. Uh, it's one of the most spectacularly boring, and I mean that as a compliment, movies that I've ever seen. He dares you to be bored and sends messages like, who are the truly dead ones? Does it really matter what you do with the dead? What does it all matter anyway when in the end the reality is your destination will be ushered in one of only two places and what determines where you will go? And nothing anyone dead, either during your life or after your death, will alter it for you. Which is more important, making sure you get the funeral right or making sure you get the afterlife right? And why is it that everybody in our world seems to be far more concerned with temporal things than eternal ones? And don't miss the fact that the old man with the duck on the bus at the beginning, both of them are headed to the same place. Death. Literally, his goose is cooked. <laughs> nice. But um. I like that. You like that one? <laughs> So and I synopsized multiple paragraphs. That's my thoughts. What are your th what's your take on it? Yeah, I... And I liked it. There you go. I liked it too, uh, especially uh, the second half to when they actually got... And it started raining and all the chaos started. Yeah, he starts losing it. He's going to bury his dad. Yeah, anyway. it, um, but it started to get really funny to me. Yes, it's, <laughs> yes. There's lots of... This director has lots of subtly, like subtle humor just thrown in there 
uh, and then <laughs> stuff maybe you shouldn't laugh at, but I'm, yeah, I think you're it's still going to. I think it's hilarious. Uh, that was one of my favorite parts is um, the second part. Oh, it's because it started with, uh, I think the, one of the main humors was the, the wife that always cried for, for, for the dead non-stop. But then, especially like when anybody came in, oh yeah, it just started up again. <laughs> and she'd stop at the drop of a hat too. You know, it was oh, can you see who they came? Why couldn't you have been alive when they brought it to you? What? No, can't you? Do you see what the? <laughs> yes, she was hilarious. She made me laugh. Um, and then obviously the whole thing, when, when obviously the bottom of the, the casket fell out. <laughs> Couldn't you get a better casket? <laughs> yeah, well, you know what it reminded me of a lot? It reminded me a lot of the last film, where everything was, the humans were the, the weird ones, mm -hmm. and the bull was the fine one. Mm -hmm. This one, all of the living people were nuts. Mm -hmm. The dead guy was the one who was normal, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, then this director makes very unique films. Very unique films. Like he does it. He doesn't go by anybody's. Um, I would you call it the uh, like a rule book? Yeah, rule book. Yeah. He has he has his own rule book for how he wants to make a film. I, I absolutely never see like he's like okay, uh, you you make a film this way, uh, Christopher Nolan, and mm -hmm. uh, I make a film this way. He's for me. He, he's kind of stylistically. I felt this in the trailer, and I felt this watching it. He's, he reminds me, his style is definitely his own, but if he's reminiscent of anybody, he's like a blend of Francis Ford Coppola and Oliver Stone mm. for me. And especially the maverick sense of I'm doing it the way I want to do it and I don't care what you think is the Oliver Stone. Coppola is the aesthetic, a very particular feel, a very particular ambiance, a very particular, uh, and just straight up like, don't care. I, I'm. I'm gonna bore you, and let's see how dedicated you are to watching cinema. Let's see how much you're gonna want to stick to the story and really find out what happens at the end. Because I'm gonna do some stuff that's not gonna necessarily float your boat that long. You may be sitting here, you know, looking at your watch, waiting for the next thing to happen. Because I'm just gonna. Blip, drip, he, I believe. Drip. I've ne he. Tell me if I'm wrong. He likes to take really simple stories, and then maybe these are just the two we've seen, obviously. Um, right. A village catching a bull and makes it... That's it. Huge, right? A village catching a bull. Yeah. That's it. That's technically, technically... A yes. son burying his dad. Son burying his dad. That's, that's it. That's the whole story. Right. Uh, and so I don't know if that's all of his stuff or if he... he it's just these two that are, are very simple stories that obviously have a lot more message behind them. Right. Um, but I don't know. But he's also... He loves chaos. Yes, he does. He, he freaking loves it. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm, the way, one, he, once again, this also had a bunch of amazing tracking shots. Uh, uh, yeah. Just like the other one. Just like the other and one. And also had a bunch of night shots as well. And really, not, there was one transition in the rain from the exterior to the interior that was freaking seamless. Yeah. Just everything about it. Mm -hmm. Sound, lighting, camera from exterior to interior was just like you walked in the door with them. Yeah, yeah. It was it was really impressive. Obviously, when when um, I forget his e e easy the, the son yeah, yeah easy was yeah. going all crazy uh, trying to bury his father and he was you know whacking people uh, in that whole rain sequence. I think for a good. It felt like five minutes. It was almost one shot. It felt it like did. For, for a little for while. A, for, yeah, for uh, a while. So I don't know if it was, um, but it, that's what it felt like. It was felt like almost like a one shot thing that he was just doing in the rain, which I don't know if it was real rain or if it was artificially done, um, whatever. But it was really, really well done. And it's not easy to shoot in the rain. <laughs> no. It's not. Just like it's not just easy like to, to shoot at night. night times. Right, exactly. <laughs> Very hard to shoot in the rain. Um, but, uh, I thought it was, I thought it was really good. This one obviously had a lot more characters that you could actually care about. Uh, yeah. in this one, obviously the, the, the Jolly Taku or whatever, whatever it's called, you weren't really supposed to care about. No. Right. It was, it was, it was just the frenzy. Mm -hmm. It was this. Uh, and this one still had a bunch of that. It was, it was most about the, the frenzy and trying to keep up with it all. And sure. Everybody doing their own thing and having their own opinions about right. how, you know, you, you should be buried, you should die, you should do whatever. 
Um, but he, he, I, I've never seen anybody who loves chaos I as know. much as this man. Yeah. <laughs> as his, not just chaos as far as what you're getting on screen. You mean, obviously, chaos as the central part of what's going on with your story. Mm -hmm. the, the, the insanity. And he, he very much, that's why I really would love to talk to him because I believe his intention with what he's depicting is with this film is the similar to the other one, which is absurdism and the questioning of why we do what we do, which you and I are big advocates yeah. about that, not just as actors, but people of, so why do we question, you know, why do we bury the way that we bury? Why, why, why bury versus cremate? Uh, what are the reasons behind it? Do you ever question the reasons behind that? Uh, does it have any implications in terms of the afterlife? I love, here comes the word, the juxtaposition <laughs> of the opening frame of the film and the closing frame of the film. Because that opening <coughs> frame of the film is the long processional oh, of the, the funeral, trailer, yeah. right? Which was in the trailer. Which was also indicative of what the, the son was going to do for his dad. Like We never got there. Yeah. He never got there. Which, it's interesting, it almost was like his son's greatest dream with his dad, his dad wouldn't even experience. You know, it wasn't like, hey dad, before you die, I wanna to go to the Himalayas. It was, dad, when you're dead, I'm gonna give you the best funeral. If I'm the dad, I'm like, well, thanks, but I'm not attending, yeah. I'll be gone. Yeah. But that ending shot of- Him and the grave digger. Yep, yeah. and dog. Yeah, and the dog. And the dog, uh, and the two separate Ships coming. That uh, he was that supposed to be symbolism deep. of like just each of them going off, or is that like one going to heaven, one go, like yeah? I, from, didn't, I didn't know what it was. I don't know. We need to hear it straight from his mouth. I think it represented the differentiation between uh, destinations that could be either considered heaven or hell, mm -hmm. salvation or damnation. Um, I don't know if that's what he intended. That's how it came across to me visually. Um, it reminded me a lot of the Roman ancient history of the ferryman, where you have the, the coin to pay the ferryman and he's going to take you across. And uh, So I, I, I don't know if that's what he intended. Does he, does he always like to do that at the end of his films? Because he had the one with the, the caveman in the last one. Which was far more spoon feed. Yeah, that was far more spoon feed. Right. Um, but does he always like to do something like that at the end of his films? So yeah. It's almost like a... It's not really a twist. Um, no, it's almost a... It's almost like a tying it up in a bow for you at the end. Yeah. Um, Does no. he always like to do that? Uh, you guys can tell us because you've seen more of his stuff than we have. We will see more of his stuff. No, yeah. Uh, because he's a fantastic director. Um, talking about just his... The cinematography, obviously, I think Jalitaku was visually more beautiful. That's really what they were going for. It was just... Because it was shot at night, it was, and then they had pitchforks, and they had the yeah. lighting. The way they did it was just so freaking pretty. It was, yeah, that's the difference between those two. Is that film? There's not a moment in that film you're not enjoying the sound or the visuals. You're just constantly going, "Wow, this is beautiful." That's what I meant by the intentional boredom. Yeah, he he like purposefully pulled away the, that visual pleasantry that you got from the other film. Mm -hmm and really made it mundane in a lot of places. Sometimes, yeah. Right? Yeah, sometimes. And it got really great, like I said, towards the, when they actually got to the outside and him in the casket, and then when the other family came in. Yeah. <laughs> was like, the whole other family of the dead was like, dad oh, I did not see that coming. About. Yeah, <laughs> did not see that uh, coming. Bro, no, dad's got another family. Got, yeah, dad's got another <laughs> family, and they're like, oh, they killed him. <laughs> Like okay, so yeah, like, I I was so glad he didn't take that farther. I thought we were gonna go off on a total other, you know, criminal. Mm -hmm. I love that it was just hinted at of maybe he didn't die, maybe they tampered with the body. You know, it's just mm -hmm. oh, maybe we need to investigate this and yeah. oh, just pandemonium. Some, some stuff I didn't I didn't even understand because like obviously the 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 daughter had that boyfriend, right? Who, but then and then when when he came to see her, I think he was trying to make out with her when he was trying to console her, which was weird, weird obviously. Yeah, yeah. It's a weird time to do it that. Is, yeah. Um, you know, you know, read the room. But, uh, <laughs> it's a dead man. Right? Exactly. Um, yeah. But, and then there was nothing really done after that. The, obviously, the boyfriend kind of um, looked in the window a lot. And then he wasn't a clarinetist, was he? Because I love the clarinet. <laughs> I don't think he was. Okay. But that clarinet 
was so freaking funny. <laughs> The fact that it was just out of tune. Yes. And it kept being out of yes. tune. Everybody just turned. Yep. And looked. Oh, it was so... That was... Oh, there was a lot of just subtly dry humor in this. That yes. I, I really appreciated that we didn't get in the other one. Just shows you how funny this director can be as well. Yes. Um, so he's not just a, a one-trick pony, which I'm sure, obviously, we know by his reputation. But it was from the last one, which didn't really to us have much humor no it was this was m well, a bit more subtle this one that one was far more direct ridiculous absurd yeah. almost keystone cop because there's so much physical at the end, comedy yeah, at the yeah. end this this one and both of them have this too he's quite the mocker mm -hmm. you know he to the point of like insulting mm -hmm. like he's an anarchist in a way you know what <laughs> he's he's very much Give me a give me a system of belief you've got, and I'm gonna hold it up here, and I'm gonna kind of butcher it and make fun of you, and let's see how you can handle that. I like I'm it. gonna point out the absurdity of what you do. Do you even question why you do what you so do? Mel Brooks does. Yes. Way. Can but... you give a defense for what you do, and is it based on logic or is it just based on the fact that you do it because you do it? You don't even think about it. I, I said this before. For me, he's one of the most exciting directors. Um, there's always pros and cons to a director, so I think the con that people would think is the potentiality that it's so director focused. Yeah, and it is. He is. He's heavy. It's he the is director is the star. Star, one hundred percent. At least of the two we've seen so far. Yes, the director is the star of these. And, and obviously, what's his uh, say? His name. Uh, the, the main actor. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's say the technical name. star of the film. Um, Shaman Vinod Jos. Uh, yeah. Uh, I presume. I feel like he did very, really, really well. I did too. Uh, and I feel like everybody in the film did well. I Me thought too. everybody was supernatural. Yeah, like uh, you met them in the in, yeah, in his village. village. Uh, but yeah, the the way at least in these two films that we've seen him, the director, it's it's his it's his thing. It's kind of like um, Alejandro and Yuri too. I was just going to think that as it pertains to Roma, not necessarily Revenant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Revenant is definitively a star vehicle for Leo. And yeah. Tom Hardy as co-star. Yeah, I get it. Roma really doesn't have that. It's very much the director's film. Well, uh, Birdman. That too. Very much the director's film. And Keaton was... You know, yeah. There's a lot of people in it, but obviously it's, the way it's directed... It's a director's film. Uh, you're impressed yeah. by how it was directed. Absolutely. Uh, but even more so with this man, because... Well, and Tarantino. Every Tarantino film, even when he's got stars, it's Tarantino's film. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he he's definitely the the star of at least the two we've seen. Yeah, we don't know if that's all of his films. Um, it'll be interesting because I think he did one film with um, Fahad Fasil. I think it's called Anan. I think is what people said um, with Fahad Fasil. And wow. so that'd be interesting to see He'd really love a to see star that. like that. And I don't know how early on in Fahad Fasil's career it was, uh, but his other film, the Diaries one, is the next one people yeah. say that we need to watch. Um, before at least because he has a new one coming out I don't know if that one got a release date yet I don't either but I would that would be my next step is to see we've seen two things that are very similar in terms of genre feel storytelling I'd love to see what he does with something that's that's completely different particularly script driven dialogue driven acting heavy I wonder if he doesn't do that he may not may not be his cup of tea yeah may not float his boat in any way so he's just gonna do these kinds of films yeah and certain directors right? do their certain type of film Wes Anderson yep Wes Anderson does Wes Anderson films he More does power to you man yeah he's like this is how I this like to make I films do. and here you go if you don't like it Tim Burton Tim Burton makes Tim Burton films yep uh, <laughs> and you know it's it's they don't really stray from their their genre too much and if yeah. they do sometimes it doesn't work Right, um, but I feel like this was a really, really good film. Yeah, uh, and also are a lot of Malo Mal Malayalam films about two hours and under. It sh I think it I think seems to be. Uh, no, I guess one of the Fahad ones we All saw. All the was well, the ones we've hours. seen have been mostly uh, short. that length. They've been short. Interesting. Yeah. And the, but they're newer too. That yeah. that's happened in Hindi film. That has as well. Yeah, they they've started to recognize runtime for the rest of the world. Yeah, uh, and shorten some of their films and still include their intermissions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's like I said before, one of the more exciting directors. 
I have no problem at all if he stays in this wheelhouse because it's a strength and it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, let us know which of his films we should watch next. Let us know uh, the next Malayalam film we should yes. watch next outside of his as well. Uh, and um, let us know how smart or dumb we are down below. Yep, we know you will. <laughs>